Well now what we're going to do is we're going to start with our pre-built caterpillar looking good all one mesh now and we're going to rig it ready for animation. Rigging is the process of building a skeleton or an armature which will be used to animate. You animate the armature or the set of bones underneath and that deforms the mesh which is the, which is the in our case is this caterpillar. So let's start off by carefully positioning our 3D cursor at the tail of the caterpillar look in the top view and also in the side view position it carefully once you've got the I'm going to left click to position the 3D cursor um, now if you take your time over this because this is probably in some ways one of the most important tutorials on the CD on the DVD um, because getting the the way that armatures work in combination with the mesh is very important if you press the space bar we do then to add and we add an armature it comes in like this it'll be have the tip of the bone already selected so you can press G to grab and you'll find that many of the commands that work on the mesh that you're familiar with will work with the bones G to grab position it carefully at the joint the, the first joint there or the last joint at the tail and then E to extrude, extrude out another bone again position that very carefully so this is going down the center of our caterpillar E to extrude so the reason for choosing a caterpillar will become apparent that although it's a very simple uh, character to do in that it only has one bone going through it in our case um, it still uses the features that we use on more complex meshes as, as things go along now you continue to do E to extrude and extrude a couple up through the neck and then extrude one for controlling the whole of the head and we can move things and edit things around as we go along and um, you'll notice that we're in edit mode at the moment obviously for the for the armature now we've got that slightly in the wrong place that should be at the neck so right click on it, it goes yellow and then G to grab and we can then move the position of the start point of these bones you can move the tip and you can also move the root of the bone I hit tab and we go into object mode or choose object mode and now we can see um, just double check that it's positioned correctly through the center of our through the center of our um, caterpillar and then choose this neck bone and do right click on this on it and do E to extrude and add another bone on like that the reason for that will become apparent a little bit later on now I'm going to save as we go along always worth doing because um, you'll notice with latest versions of Blender when you do file and open there's an open recent list which makes it much easier for finding previous builds if you've had to go back a step or two now I'm going to actually give it a better name because the mesh object the body of our caterpillar isn't actually named anything so I'm going to call it the first part of caterpillar c-a-t-e-r you can call it something else if you like even give it the character's name i was thinking of calling this guy kevin the caterpillar that may be a bit too sad anyway on with this tutorial so now with the body selected we then shift click to select the um to, s to select the armature control p and we we don't create the groups we're not going to create any vertex groups because we're going to do do that a different way in a moment so now we've pa parented the um, mesh to the armature so what that means is that um, when we move the armature it'll move the uh, the mesh in effect now what I'm going to do to make it easier I do M and move the body onto the second layer and I just want to actually show you now what happens when we without doing anything else when we start moving bones on this armature so we haven't set anything up so if you do R to rotate now G, if you just G to grab the last bone and this one here when you rotate it nothing really much happens same with the top one it just rotates the head now that's called FK or forward kinematics I think is the correct pronunciation but we're going to use something called inverse kinematics the best way is to show you and there's this new option auto IK which you won't use all the time but in for our caterpillar that's quite handy now look at the difference when you grab the head bone look how that behaves just play around with this yourself 
and that bone there which we extruded G to grab now look you can see that that's quite useful for controlling um, a caterpillar and you can also grab those neck bones G to grab and because the auto IK is set up that's how it behaves so you've already got without doing anything else any other complex setting up you've got quite a good caterpillar motion for animating that is pretty cool if you had to fiddle or if you tried doing things previously before that that feature was there I mean IK is normally set up manually and um, you can learn to do that as time goes on but um, this is just a good way of getting started now if you select all the bones by doing A you can then use Alt and R to clear the rotation Alt and G to clear the location that's worth remembering it gets you back to the start position now hold down shift and then select the second layer so we can once again see our caterpillar our caterpillar mesh okay so do control W to save what we've done so far now if we go into pose mode which is an extra mode because on meshes you've either got edit mode or whatever uh, edit mode or ob object mode and if um, if you now you'll notice that when you grab the bones the mesh is deforming a little bit and looking strange why is that that's because by default it tries to use envelopes which is a relatively new feature which we're not going to be using at this time because the reason we're not using envelopes is because we want to have more accuracy and it's quite straightforward using something called weight painting now we've taken envelopes off there so when you grab it there is no movement of the mesh at all which is what we want <coughs> Now we're going to also click on the X-ray option, which we've got the armature selected and we put X-ray on. X-ray, it kind of works the opposite way around to what you'd expect, because you actually put X-ray on on the thing that is going to be visible through other objects. So um, it, it's just a description after all. So X-ray makes the object you chose to be X-ray visible through other objects. And for when we're doing posing, that's going to make it an awful